Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So I am going to be describing autoimmune lymphoproliferative syndrome, otherwise known as ALPS, and I'm going to try and describe it in simple terms so that it's easy to understand for non-scientific people. So whether you are a parent and your child has ALPS or you have ALPS yourself and you really want to understand what's going on and why you get these symptoms and conditions, I'm going to try my best ability to make you understand that. So firstly, I'm just going to break down the name autoimmune lymphoproliferative syndrome. It's also known as ALPS, so that's an easier way to remember it, and it is a quite hard name to say. Um, so autoimmune means that the, body, the cells in your body attack themselves. So your immune system is attacking yourself, even though it shouldn't. Then lymph generally means it's a part of the lymphatic system, which I will go over. Syndrome is related to the common symptoms um, shared by all ALPS patients or most ALPS patients. And proliferative means that cells are dividing or they're growing in a way, so accumulating. So to be able to, to discuss ALPS, um, I'm going to go over three parts. So firstly, I will go over simpler terms and then I will go to the pathophysiology of ALPS and what actually causes it. So I'm going to start off with the body in simple terms, then the immune system, and then once we've understood those basic concepts, we'll go over the pathophysiology of ALPS. So for the body in simple terms, I'm mainly going to talk about organs and their functions and what makes up those organs because this is how we can understand how um, ALPS affects these organs. So firstly, I'm drawing lungs here. And lungs are important for gas exchange, which most people would already know this. Um, so we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out our waste products like CO2, and that's why they're really important. Um, I'm now drawing a liver, and there's a little gallbladder underneath. And the liver is has so many functions, but I'll just list a few of the main functions. So um, the liver is important for... Um, removing toxins, so detoxification, um, it stores glycogen, um, which is basically our energy, like glucose. Um, it also secretes bile, and the little gallbladder underneath is what produces the bile. We then have the bone and the bone marrow. Lots of people know about bone, and obviously that that is good for a structure of our body, but the bone marrow is actually really important because that's an environment where cells are made, which I will talk about in a minute. And this fourth organ looks a bit like a kidney, but it's actually a spleen. And this is really important, um, and not many people know about the spleen, but it filters blood and recycles uh, red blood cells. And it also stores white blood cells and platelets, which I'll go into their function just lightly when I go over the immune system. So all of these organs are made from cells. So all these little cells, I'm just going to draw a few examples. So I've got a B cell, I've got a red blood cell. All these cells will make up the organ, and that's why they're really important. So now I'm drawing a muscle cell. Uh, this is a nerve cell. They all have many different structures, so they all look quite different. And then I've just got some squamous cells. Now I've gone over what makes up these organs and their basic uh, functions. I can now touch over the immune system so that we have a basic idea of what it does. So the immune system is really important because it is basically a mechanism of yeah, mechanisms, cells and organs that um, protect our body and yeah, they defend us. These include, um, there's apoptosis, which I will cover, that's why I've underlined it. There's platelets, neutrophils, eosinophils, B cells and T cells and the lymphatic system. So these are just a few things a part of the immune system. And I'll go over the like what each one is, but I'll mainly cover apoptosis and the lymphatic system. So here I am just drawing a blood vessel and we're going to pretend that we've punctured the blood vessel with a needle. And that's what I'm going to use to describe all the platelets and all those wordy things and what they are. So I'm just drawing a few of these cells and I'll explain what they do. So here on the very left, I have two cells and the circles are similar shapes. So they are B cells and T cells and we call them lymphocytes. And they're involved in recognizing pathogens and assisting in killing them. So pathogens are like viruses, bacteria, 
anything that can make us sick that maybe we eat or we consume some way. Um, so they assist in, in protecting us in that way. Also, what I'm now colouring in green is called a neutrophil. And this is a white blood cell and it engulfs those pathogens and destroys it. So it also helps in destroying those pathogens. Then we have what I coloured in red and this is a platelet and what this does is it coagulates around the area of the puncture site to stop the bleeding. So it's really important. Um, so most of these, what I've written on the right of the cells, they're white blood cells except for the platelets. So now I'm drawing two people, what, what should look like people. And I'm just going to describe, so a lot of us see these pictures when we go to the doctors or we've seen it at school or something like that, where we have the the blue and the red and that's blood vessels so we have red is oxygenated blue is deoxygenated but a lot of us ha haven't seen the green and that's what I'm drawing in the second one and that's actually the lymphatic system so these are lymph vessels and lymph nodes that I've got in the darker green and this is really important because it um, transports fluid um, it carries white blood cells which we know um, are very important for the immune system um, to attack bad things and it also rids the body of toxins, waste and other materials. So a lot of the organs involved in the lymphatic system include the spleen, the thymus and the lymph nodes. And yeah, that's really good and it's a big part of our immune system. So the immune system is mainly composed of those white blood cells, which was the neutrophils and the B cells and T cells and all of that stuff. So now I'm going to go over the pathophysiology of ALPS because we have the basic understanding of white blood cells, their function of protecting our body, cells in general of how they make up organs and all of that stuff in the lymphatic system. So ALPS is an inherited condition and it can be inherited to both genders. Um, um, and it is quite rare. So it's definitely a rare disease. Um, it's still important though. Most rare diseases are still very important. And most cases are from a heterozygous mutation of the FAS gene. So I'm just going to quickly explain this. So a gene is part of our DNA, so the blueprints that help make up our body or things in our body. And a mutation is when something changes and it's usually not for the better. So what does this actually mean? So obviously if I said there's a mutation in the FAS gene, you're going to have no idea what this means. But I'm going to talk about cell death and apoptosis which if you remember it was something as a part of our immune system so cells will die and usually we have a balance so it's actually good for cells to die because if they don't die then we can get things like cancer so in cell death um, this is called apoptosis and this is what I covered in part of the um, immune system functions and the part of the mechanisms that help protect us so apoptosis can actually be a good thing. We want cells to die, um, like obviously with, with cancer, um, that's cells that can't die. So how do cells normally die? So I'm just going to go over all these proteins that are involved that you may have never heard of so you can really understand how this is supposed to happen. So there's two ways. There's intrinsically and extrinsically. And intrinsically is things like chemotherapy and DNA damage through x-rays. And sometimes we do this to induce death in things like cancer. And then there's also extrinsically, and that's through FAS. And FAS is a receptor on the cell. So here I'm just drawing, this is a FAS ligand, and this binds to FAS, which is what I'm colouring in pink, and that activates it. So it phosphorylates it, it basically means activate it. And then I'm just going to say all these proteins, they aren't that important, but I'm just going to say a bit of the pathway of what happens. So then this activates another protein called FAD, and then this then activates these proteins called procaspases, 8 and 10. So caspases are really important. Um, they're just a protein that carries out certain functions, like helping break down the cell wall so that the cell can die. So then this... Um, activates caspases and then it activates ultimately caspase 3 and 7 which is what causes the apoptosis to happen they help the cell die so this is the extrinsic pathway and then we have the intrinsic pathway which is damaging agents such as chemotherapy and x-rays and that damages the cell and what this does is it actually activates a family of proteins and 
These are called the BCL family. There's a few other proteins that can be activated as well, but I'll just try and simplify it. And then um, you may have heard of the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. This is a thing that we commonly learn in biology um, in high school. And what this does is it causes the mitochondria to release um, a little protein. And that little protein actually activates the caspases as well. So then that also causes apoptosis. So that's called cytochrome C and that activates the caspases. So to summarize, um, if we have the FAS and the FAS ligand binding to it, we will have apoptosis. But if we don't have the FAS ligand binding to the FAS, there'll be no apoptosis. So the cell will not die. And before I continue with going further, so when there is a mutation in FAS, this means that the FAS ligand could bind to the cell, but it won't die because um, the, there's a mutation, so the FAS isn't working to its best ability. So this is when we could get a, an accumulation of cells. So the characteristics of ALPS, now we're going to talk about how this mutation actually causes the symptoms in a person with ALPS. So as I'm writing now, it's due to accumulation of lymphocytes and autoimmunity. So firstly, here I've got splenomegaly. So omegaly usually means enlargement, and obviously it's enlargement of the spleen. So if you ever hear a doctor say that, that's what that means. Um, and we've also got hepto-splenomegaly, which is both the spleen and the liver. And um, the reason why these organs are common is because they usually are involved with white blood cells. We also have some conditions that are caused by the autoimmunity, where the body now has an accumulation of cells and now it wants to kill all those cells, so it starts to attack itself. So we have neutropenia, and before I talked about those neutrophils, the engulfed pathogens. So there's a decrease, decreased number in, neut in neutrophils, and that's called neutropenia. We also have thrombocytopenia, so a low platelet count. So they're the ones that help um, clog things to stop the bleeding. Um, and then we can also get lymphocytosis. They can decrease in the, in the amount and have abnormalities. And then there's also this thing found called DNTs, and they're double negative T cells. So um, obviously I won't go into it too much because it's really hard to understand, but they're just a form of T cells and they just don't have specific receptors to carry out their functions. So also, obviously, due to um, the autoimmunity and to accumulation of cells, we can get cancer and we can get non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and Hodgkin's lymphoma. That's is a high risk in ALPS patients, so usually they need to have a lot of follow-ups. Um, and then obviously there's lots of other cytopenias and blood problems involved. I just listed a few there. But one of the main um, things that you will see, and it's the first thing that you can really see, is usually swollen lymph nodes. So someone will have a big neck. And um, that's called lymph adenopathy. Um, and that's disease of the lymph nodes. So that's commonly seen in patients with ALPS. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this gave you a little bit of insight into everything. You may have already had an idea of a few things, but I hope I've really summarized how um, this single mutation or a few of these mutations in this pathway can cause the symptoms of ALPS and the conditions involved and why it's really important disease, even though it's rare because there's so much that you could get. You can get cancer from it and it can be really, um, it can really affect your quality of life. If you have any further questions about ALPS and the disease, um, feel free to comment down below and I will get back to you. Um, and if there's anything you need clarification on, feel free again to comment down below and I will get back to you on that as well. So thank you so much for watching and yeah, I hope this was really helpful.